this is part two of uh, the series of, that we have on the Jews of Ashkenaz. We're on our way to uh, Mainz or Magenza, like the, the, the Jews used to call it. Um, we were in the middle of discussing uh, when the Jews first arrived in the uh, in the Rhineland. So we had brought, uh, we had discussed the uh, tradition that the Jews were here still from the time of the uh, of the uh, first base of Mikdash with the story of Azar Soifa. The first documentation that we have from uh, the Jews living here is uh, the uh, rights that uh, Constantine the Great um, gave uh, for the Jews living in Kirn, in Kirn. Um, So Obviously the Jews were already here before, so most probably, by most accounts, uh, the Jews came along with the Romans. When the Romans, uh, um, in the first century, when they destroyed the base of Mikdash, uh, even before maybe, uh, the Romans also captured this, the, the, these lands, the Germanic lands, all the way up to, uh, to England. Um, and the Germans uh, needed people to administer, administer, administer their, their lands, so they would bring along um, uh, some Jews with them wherever they went. Uh, the Jews, uh, the Germans had called the people here, the, Jew, the people of German, Germany, Germany, and they um, they set up shop. One of the main cities that they set up, set up shop was it was in Cologne, not the city that we had just uh, visited. And the uh, um, they had Jews. There were Jews there. There's, they were they, you know they were doing commerce and they were doing. They were, the Jews were basically the, the bankers of the uh, of the of, of Cologne. And Constantine had sent their uh, first um, rights for the Jews. Uh, the right also to hold office in the, in the, in the local senate, um, be part of the uh, be part of the uh, the town the town council, and other and other rights that he gave. So that's, that's the first mention of Jews being in the Rhineland. Uh, at, we are very in, the, in, the, in, in still back before the Middle Ages, classical times. But when we really start getting a real influx, we start getting more uh, more information. That'll be by the by the by the time of the Frankish kings of uh, the Charlemagne. The, 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 the Frankish king Charlemagne. Um, he was the first king uh, to be called the, the Holy Roman em em Emperor. He uh, conquered a lot of lands. Uh, he was a very big king. He ruled from uh, north, of, north, of, north of Spain, the northern, Sp northern parts of Spain, all the way up to the, to the Scandinavian countries. All of what we know today, France, Germany, Austria, good parts of it. Um, Luxembourg and uh, Belgium, Netherlands. Everything that we know of these, these lands, they were all uh, under his rule. Uh, even parts of Italy. Good parts of Italy, till, till, till the, the definitely a good part of northern Italy was uh, also under his control. Now, um, between the time uh, when the Romans were kicked out of these land of Europe uh, in the, in the uh, early sixth century or the late fifth century, until until the uh, Aralonian kings, the first one being uh, Charlemagne or his father Pepin, maybe. Uh, the, Jews, uh, the Jews living here were really up to the whim of the kings that, that, that ruled. Uh, Charlemagne was the first one that uh, he said, okay, uh, he understood the problem and, and the, and the uh, difficulty of ruling all these different factions and parties and interests. So what he did was is he, uh, he, joined, he joined ranks with the, uh, with the Pope and he said, he told the Pope, listen, uh, You'll be the one that uh, makes me that 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 approves me to be the, the king, and I'll prove you be pope. And uh, just make you make sure that I am uh, that I'm I'm king. And but on condition, he was the condition was that he he was elected that all the uh, holy Roman emperors, like they call them, they were elected elected officials. They weren't. Uh, they weren't. They didn't rule by by, by hierarchy. By hered, they didn't uh, rule by hereditary uh, um, customs. But the actual, there were seven electors. It's not important for our, for our discussion now. But it was it was they worked in a total system. This Charlemagne, <coughs> we know for sure that he had uh, at least one court Jew. It's it's, it's, uh, it's 
just mentioned some uh, some some Mr. Isaac, a very very interesting guy. Uh, he was sent by one of the delegations to the caliph that was called um, Harun al Rashid from Baghdad. Um, he was sent on, the, on on a mission. It was a political mission, and it looks like Isaac uh, was was sent because he spoke uh, he spoke the language, I guess, Aramaic, whatever it was, was uh, that they spoke, or Arabic. And uh, he was he went he went along. Now, the, the, the craziest part is is that this Isaac was the only one that survived this uh, coming to come back from Baghdad. And um, this uh, Harun al Rashid sent him back uh, sent a, a, a present back for um, Charlemagne. Which became who he, he, this was around seven seven sixty eight or between seven seven sixty eight and uh, that's when he became king and, and, and around the, the year eight fourteen that was that, that's when he that was, that's when his kingdom finished. And he sent them back a prize, uh, a big elephant, <laughs> and this elephant even had a name. It was called Abul Abbas. <laughs> this Abul Abbas. Um, it wasn't so simple because Mr. Ha Mr. Isaac had to get back from Baghdad with an elephant, <coughs> which wasn't that simple. Uh, it looks like he, he made his way by land all the way uh, to North Africa, and he he got a he got a boat in, in Kiruwan in, in Tunisia, and from there he, uh, he took he took a ship to, uh, to as far as he can get to get to Europe, and then he did. He waited out uh, the winter, and then he took in the su in the summer. He crossed the Alps, and he uh, and he brought the the, uh, the the elephant to Aachen, a city called Aachen. And there also the uh, that's where the this Charlemagne was 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 emperor at the time in Aachen. And he was a Frankish king, but he was a Frankish king later on in the 10th century. A lot of them started becoming the, from from the German uh, German people. But this uh, this Charlemagne, if we follow the legends, he also invited the uh, family, the Kleinomus family, to come from Luca. Luca is a is the main the main city in Tuscany. Uh, the Kleinomus family they should move up. They should come, they should come settle the lands along the Rhine. Uh, we shouldn't forget that in the time of Charlemagne. Uh, since his kingdom was so great, the, the, the movement of, of the subjects and of, of, of his kingdom were also very easy, much much easier to move around. So, uh, a Jew, if, if he was living in Tuscany, and, 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 and but he was in the same kingdom as as as, as, as the, uh, the, the Holy Roman Holy Roman Empire, so he was able to move around freely. So he was able to go from northern Italy, easy. He was able to show up along uh, the, the Rhine, which was uh, for them a, a better prospects in, 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 in business. Now, the first one for the family to show up was Moshe, Moshe ben Kleinemus. He was called by us the Moshe Azokin. Moshe Azokin. He came with two sons. One was called uh, Kleinemus after his own father. One was called Ikusil. Um This is Moshe Azokin. We know from the, uh, we know him from uh, Parts of, of, of the Smidas we say even today on Shabbos, the Kol Mekadesh Shmi'i, that we say on Shabbos, the Menucha, the Simcha, was uh, was was written by him. Um, if, if 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 the tradition is true, and that's also how the the, the Yosha Mekandia says, then uh, they showed up in Ma, in Mayans Magenza in the 17 uh, 780 something, 785 or something like that, according to uh, the Marshal. The Shleim Aluya, it would be it, it, it is missing a couple of years. It was not this, not the Charlemagne, but it would be at the time of his of his of his of his grandson, some hundred years later. So this uh, Moshe has, has this this uh, the Moshe has, okay. Is um, he he comes from he comes from Tuscany now. They they they, they were called the Kleinomus family. What does Kleinomus mean? Kleinomus means uh, in the Greek uh, um, uh, Shem Tov, good name. Now, why would they have a Greek name? Because the family, the Kleinomus family, really had their roots in southern Italy, which was also was part was was back in the day uh, part of the Byzantium, the Byzantine, the last vestiges of the Byz the, the Byzantine Empire in Rome, in, in Italy was at the bottom of the boot, uh, and this place is called Bari and 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 Ortonto. 
So uh, they came from these places. Now, uh, um, some someone is saying it uh, makes a lot of sense that the uh, when Justinian um, made all the anti-Jewish regulations of Palestine in the sixth century, a lot of the Jews picked themselves up and they went to the other part of the empire, to the to uh, to the southern Italy. They thought they'll have they'll, they'll, they'll have it easier and better. Um, and that's this family, the Clonimus family, was also part of them. And they moved from there up further on to Tuscany. And then, in this, then they were invited by Charlemagne in the middle of the 8th century to move further up to the Rhineland. They should move up further to the Rhineland to, uh, to settle the lands. And they came to Magenza and they opened the yeshiva. So that would be uh, the first uh, uh, um, uh, influence, uh, uh, um, scholarly influence, on the uh, on the on the on the on the, uh, the, the origins of the Ude Ashkenaz. Um, with them, this Kleinimus family also brought all the uh, 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 mystical and, and liturgical um, uh, prayers and 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 and, 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 and uh, the soydus, the uh, Secrets of, of, of the, uh, the Torah, the Kabbalah that they had uh, from from the Palestinian cannabis, like straight from Eretz Israel. That's why the Jews, the Ashkenaz, held themselves a a, a, uh, a, a, a continuation of the uh, of the Palestinian rites, not not the Babylonian. Also, we'll see also Babylonian. We'll see in a minute why. But the Kleinimus family definitely they were called. Uh, we'll see it also later on with Magenza when we speak about the Bnei Meshulam. Um, so we'll speak about that later. But another another major um, another major uh, influence in, in, in the in the, in the, in the uh, in Magenza that will be the Mayans that we know it uh, uh, from from that time, from early times in Ashkenaz, was someone called Rabbeinu Gershom, Rabbeinu Gershom or Hagoyl. We're going to speak about him later on uh, when we get to uh, when we get to his his uh, his. Uh, his grave uh, site in in, in, in Mayans, but uh, suffice it to say that uh, Rabbeinu Gershem, he was born a Metz. He was a friend, he, he, and he also learned in by uh, Rabbi Leonton, in in, in, in in the French uh, um, academy. So uh, he brought he brought the scholarly thoughts of the French rabbis um, also to Mayans. Not that the Klein was talking about the Italians, which was more. The Palestinian uh, rights and the uh, the friend and the Ben Ugeshem, he brought the uh, he brought the uh, he brought it from the French, from the French uh, rabbis. Uh, another one, major influencer was uh, also a colleague of uh, the Ben Ugeshem uh, um, Goyla, the light of the uh, of the exile. I'll explain later on when we were by his um, when we were by his. Uh, by his grave, but the um, another major influence uh, on the uh, origins of the uh, the, the scholarly uh, academies, uh, Talmudic academies, and the growing of the yeshivas here in Ashkenaz, was someone called Reb Shimon Hagadol, Reb Shimon the, the, Shimon the Great. Um, he, he, he signed himself Reb Shimon by Yitzchak Bar Abun, Shimon the son of Yitzchak, the son of Abun, also from French origin. Uh, he also comes to settle in, in the lands of Mayans. He was very influenced by the Kleinimus family and he wrote by himself also a lot of piyutim that we have. Um, for example, the, 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 every Shabbos we sing um, Baruch Hashem Yoim Yoim. Obviously it doesn't start there, it starts with uh, the, 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 the paragraph right afterwards and he signs his name in acronym Shimon. His, his, his Talmud, Baruch, added Baruch Hashem Yavir to it, and he added Baruch Kalayun also. But uh, this Shema Ba Yitzchak is also um, a big Paitan that a lot, most, uh, well, not most, but a good part of our our Yoytzes, uh, of the second day Yontif, since most of the Yoytzes come from the Palestinian uh, yeshivas, the only, which only had one, one, uh, one day Yontif. So for the second day Yontif, they were missing the Piyutim. And uh, Shimon ba, the, the Shimon Agadol is one of the main Hayatanim that made us the Yoytzes for the second day's Yom Tov. We find them all over, just at Meshachunah. Um, we 
mentioned, uh, he says, uh, a yotzer about his son, uh, was brought to the art school, said the Briggs, that, that uh, Kail Khunan, Hashem Li Elikim, that he, he had a son that was a, uh, that was stole from, that was stolen by, from him when he was very young, and uh, according to the legend, he became a pope, and he would be poked in the centuries the third. And how he comes back to, uh, the, the le big legends, how he comes back to, uh, to, 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 uh, to embrace Judaism again. Um, so that would be the three main uh, um, parties of influence for the, uh, the, the holy yeshivas of Mainz, Magenza, going back from the 9th century through the 11th century. So far, to say, that was, again, that would be the, uh, the Kleinemus family, Moshe, 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 the Moshe Agudoil, Azuken, we had the uh, Benu Geshem Moel Agudoil, we had Reb Shimon And this, this, this goes that so far to say is that the Rosh, the Ben Osha Ba Yechiel, we just, we are, uh, that, that, that lived in Kill, um, he eventually runs away from here, he lives in, 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 in uh, Toledo. Um, he writes in one of the Chuvas that um, the, the custom of the Ashkenaz takes precedence over the custom of the Svadim. Since by then the Torah was, the, 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 uh, the traditions go back all the way to the uh, destruction of the Temple. Um, so, not, not, not likewise some other, like, like the Svadim, which the, the, the traditions of the, of the Rabbis came, came much later. He probably means to say is that the Kleinimus family and, the, and, and had had a tradition going back all the way, going all the way back to, to, the, to the Palestinian yeshivas, and um, Benu Gesha maybe also had from the French rabbis. The Svadim only got their Torah uh, at the time of the Rif and the Rimigash, and the story of the Abba Shmuel, which was also quite late, but it was a couple of generations later. So he says that the, the, the custom of the Ashkenazim, Ashkenazim take precedence over the uh, custom of the Svardim. Um, this, all this, this, this time they didn't, the Jews coming here to uh, Mainz in the time of the Carolonian uh, uh, empires, uh, Roman, Holy Roman empires, emperors, I'm sorry, Holy Roman emperors, they, uh, they had, in the beginning they had it good, you see, like we said, Charlemagne was very good to the Jews. Um, his son also Louis second I think what was his name Louis the Louis the Pius Louis Pius he was uh, his son also upheld as the, the tradition of uh, of the uh, keeping uh, the right the Jews giving them all the rights that they had uh, but that's when the the, uh, the church started making uh, ramblings we have the church of Lyon Abogard Abogard the, the, he was probably the main, arch, the main Archbishop of, of France, Archbishop of Lyon. He writes a bunch of letters and anti-Jewish polemics, but Louis doesn't doesn't hear, doesn't want to have any of it. Um, but after Louis pass, uh, after Louis passes on, um, things start to de start declining a bit for the Jews because the uh, 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 there was one uh, main uh, one one big one big. Uh, uh, a one big representative of the King Louis, his name was um, Bogat, and he decided to become Eliezer the Jew, converted, and he was very high in, in the court of the Jew, of the King, and uh, this made the, the church even crazier, and they said, you see, that's what happens when you so good to the Jews, they're going to start converting. And um, so the, from then on, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Holy Roman Empire, Emperors tried. They, they, they played a better balance with the church, and uh, they started making anti-Jewish measures. And this, this polemic started getting worse and worse and worse because the people uh, in Germany, uh, they, no one, no one is born to hate. Uh, this is something that's, uh, that has to be taught, and this was starting to be in, in, ingrained into the people uh, slowly but surely. As and then we get to really the 11th century, we start seeing pogroms. Different calamities that befall the Jewish people in in, in, in Mainz. Against we have a Benu Gershmari writing a Kinnis Nasticha from his times. 
and things start getting out of hand and that's what uh, that's what that's when we come to the time of the crusades when when this culmination of hate of two three hundred years for the church um, and the fallout that it has at, at the first crusade